What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and it is finally time to talk about season two of Halo. If you guys have not seen my coverage on the first season that I did a little over a year ago at this point, really quickly without taking too much time out of this video, I mentioned there that I'm a ginormous Halo fan. I played every single game dozens of times when it comes down to the campaign. Maybe a couple of them like the most recent one Halo Infinite. I haven't played as much in terms of the campaign but they've all gotten a replay multiple times with the first three Halo games including things like ODST and Reach, getting four, five, six, seven, even more than that. I think Halo 3, I may have played that campaign at least 15 times all the way through, especially back in the heyday when Halo was, was at its prime. I just remember it being what really surged my love for online gameplay for video games. It wasn't the first game I had played online, but it was the first one that made me competitive, and I have so many fond memories of bonding with various classmates and people from my church, friends that from my neighborhood, my dad, my sister. I played Halo with so many people in my life. I have so many fond memories of it. And so going into that first season as a ginormous fan who's put thousands of hours into the series as a whole when it comes to the games, I was rather disappointed like a lot of fans to see the first season was not following the narrative of the games. But I instantly had to tell myself, okay, all the pieces are there and, and, and they're creating a new story and I wanted to try to give it a shot. So on that level, if you saw my review for the first season, then you know that looking at it with a lens of a new Halo story that does not divulge itself in adapting the first game or any of the games in general, I went into it with just an open mind and ultimately really enjoyed the season. Now, while I was disappointed by some things, of course, as a huge fan of the game and again, having to tell myself, this is not an adaptation of the game, so look at it with a different set of eyes. Um, there were things that disappointed me, and I think the most notable thing that most people were disappointed with when it came to the first season was that Master Chief took his helmet off, and the other Spartans in general did that as well, which was not something you saw too commonly, especially when it just came to Master Chief. There are some other Spartans in the games who have taken off their helmet, but when it comes down to Master Chief, that, that's a big no-no. So instantly... A lot of fans were not a fan of that, and it, it bothered me too. I mean, there's no getting around it, right? I think if you are a longtime fan of Halo, Master Chief is just the iconic image on all the boxes of the games. Most people who don't even play the games are familiar with him as in at least a, a visual for something, or specifically for Halo. And so, yeah, going into it and, and having him take his helmet off was disappointing for sure. Now, Pablo Schreiber, or Schreiber, uh, who plays Master Chief, I think does a really great job in both the first season and in this season as well. So at least that part of it was at least enjoyable because you could tell he cared about playing the role of John, the role of Master Chief. And so, yeah, even though he was unhelmeted in that first season quite a bit, I went into this season a, a lot more open-minded because I did enjoy a lot of the elements of that first season. The special effects, the cinematography, a lot of the performances. I'm a huge fan of sci-fi and fantasy as I've talked about dozens and dozens and dozens of times here on this channel. So Halo is right up my alley. So it had all the right pieces. They used the sound effects from the game. They used the music from the games and they had all the different elements various characters mixed in with new characters and they created their own fresh story and so going into the season i already knew that that was going to be the stance i was looking forward to seeing what they trickled in from the games that they did not trickle in in the first um season and just to see where the story would go so with all that said at the very end of the last season there was a big fight with the covenant of course they believe that they've won master chief has taken out at least a big chunk of the covenant they're not foolish enough to think that there aren't any more but they've kind of won the day there's an an artifact that they were chasing that was giving um master chief these 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 visions throughout the course of the season and there was a character named mckee that was the character that was very divisive amongst fans who was eventually essentially a love interest for master chief which is not something that really happens in the games but you know definitely something that was new for this and i enjoyed it for the most part at times but at other times it felt a little cliche and a little cheesy especially with master chief being such a cool character that keeps its helmet on all the time and you know he, he's just there to be a badass you know he has empathy and and like there's some depth and nuance to him as you get further in the games as time goes on and you learn that he's more than just the hardened shell that you see but the games are able to convey so much of that just with his helmet on but anyway no more of the helmet stuff for right now but yeah so this season starts off right out of the gate and 
Master Chief is on another planet. He is fighting off a, a bunch of the, the Covenant, um, but nobody believes him as the season progresses. He gets himself caught in a, in a fight with one specific trooper, somebody named uh, Perez, who we'll get into her in just a second. Uh, and the two of them survive a fight with the Covenant. When they come back from that fight and tell everybody that it was the Covenant, most notably Chief, they don't believe him. He also tells them that he saw McKee there as well, who's also believed to have been dead after the events of the last season. And he pretty much is trying to tell the UNSC and everybody around him, all the humans, the people that are, of course, his higher ups, that there is a threat of the Covenant coming back, that they're specifically going to go for big human civilizations like Reach. And if you're a fan of the video games and you're super familiar with Reach, that's a very pivotal story point when it comes down to Halo. And so, yeah, nobody believes Master Chief at the beginning of the season, which is pretty disappointing to see, as of course he's done so much. But a huge reason that this is happening is, of course, because Dr. Catherine Halsey is no longer in command, of course, once again played by Natasha McEnhold. And this time around, we're introduced to a newer character who is the new director of the whole Spartan program and that character's name is Ackerson played by Joseph Morgan and so yeah now you got this new guy in command in the Halsey position who's running the Spartan program and he is limiting them left and right he doesn't want to believe Master Chief in any way shape or form and essentially puts the Spartan program to the side takes their suits takes them off the battlefield and essentially tries to manipulate the whole situation into him kind of being this new leader and the Spartans kind of being looked at as just a team that needs to sit on the sidelines right now, a team that isn't ready to go back out onto the field, even though they are the strongest group of soldiers that they have in their arsenal. This, of course, does not rub Master Chief well whatsoever. So majority of the season is spent with him trying to get those around him, including his peers and his fellow Spartans, that he saw what he saw on that planet with the Covenant and that a huge threat is coming and uh, he doesn't really know who he can or can't trust anymore and there's some new threats that are mixed into the whole mix there are some iconic fan favorites that appear throughout the course of the season i don't want to lean into too many spoilers here in the earlier part of the season but yeah there's some fan favorite threats that start to appear later on um, and some big key moments that happen over the course of the season but the base premise the covenant are coming and master chief has to do what he can uh, to try to prove to everybody around him that they're actually coming and i like this on one hand because the show really focused on this season on allowing us to see a more empathetic and sympathetic version of master chief and that was something that we're definitely teasing in the last season but the the spartans as a whole are dealing with a lot of that in this season in the last season they still had their chips in their head of course they slowly over the course of the season had removed said chips in order for them to kind of start to have their own autonomy have their own thoughts and emotions but they still don't fully know how to go about feeling those, how to go about being that way comfortably. And so going into this season, you know, that was something I was interested to see what they were going to do. And a lot of that is done through facial acting. I should say right out of the gate that I don't even really think it's a spoiler to say this, but I've already mentioned that the premise is that they've been pretty much benched in a lot of ways at the very beginning, and the Spartans aren't necessarily being recognized or put into battle or anything like that. And their suits are taken away from them for a huge portion of the show, Meaning that if you were going into this hoping that Master Chief was going to be helmeted for a lot more of this season, because they already did the unhelmeting part in the last season, then I'm very unfortunately sad to tell you guys that that is not what happened. Uh, Master Chief spends a lot more time in this season without his helmet, which... Listen, I said it when I reviewed the first season that I almost understood where their perspective was coming from. There's this element of it with the first season that it came out just a couple of years shy of the Mandalorian. And funny enough, we'd seen Mandalorian characters in Star Wars take their helmets off countless times before the Mandalorian actual series came out. And between the events of the last time we saw them on screen and the Mandalorian, those characters had something kind of change within their creed, a sect of the Mandalorians that were not taking off their helmets. So that was a new element added to the Mandalorians in that Star Wars series. And so I almost feel like with having a whole space fantasy series that's incredibly popular as well, that had to do with a character that's helmeted, not taking his helmet off, I almost feel like they didn't want to feel like they were just treading on the same kind of situation with Halo. 
even though Halo is also well known for that, and I think they could have easily been the franchise to get away with just having the helmeted character, but I do genuinely think that was a huge part of having him take off his helmet so early in the season. And I think also the actors, most notably Pablo, the guy, the main guy who plays Master Chief, I feel like he probably had something in his contract that he wants to be able to show off his acting skills and the absolutely sick physique that the guy got to play this role. And so it's disappointing to say, but yeah, majority of the season is with our characters without their suits, without their helmets. But with that comes the ability to get to know these characters under the suits a little bit more in a way that the video games don't allow for. I think some people are going to hate that outright. Even people who maybe are watching this and haven't seen the season yet, you're really going to probably already go into it like upset about that but i do think that pablo and the rest of the cast who play all of our spartans and i'm going to get into all the characters in just a second but i think that they all do a really great job to create a world that you can buy into a story that has meaning there are some gripes i have for this season but ultimately i think for the most part this is a really solid and fun show that utilizes pieces of halo lore pieces of halo characters mixed in with new story elements and new characters to create its own story and i think similar to that first season there's some great action some great visuals some great CGI. Sometimes the CGI can be just a little bit cartoony, but the way I kind of described it when I reviewed it in the first season was that there are a couple of moments in action, most notably when Master Chief is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with big aliens, that looks a little bit like a video game cutscene, but I kind of share the same sentiment I had when I covered the first season, which is that I'm okay with a video game live action show looking like a really badass video game cutscene in those moments of action. It feels like it kind of fits, and so my thoughts are very similar when it comes to this season. Now, there are some elements about the way that this season wrapped up with the final episode that honestly had me incredibly excited. I think anybody who is a fan of Halo is going to see the things that they're setting up, hear the things that they're setting up, and how this season is ending, and be pretty excited. Now, I do think a downside to the ending of this season, though, is that it did feel like the final episode had some sort of conclusion on a couple of beats but mostly left a lot of things wide open for what's to come in the next season and I think anybody again who has played the video games knows clearly what's coming so the downside to the end of this season is that it feels more like a setup for season three while having a slight uh, like kind of vibe of conclusion but ultimately not feeling like a conclusive ending really to the season as a whole there are a couple of gripes I have throughout the course of the mix and the biggest one would be that there are some characters that are given more screen time here that were smaller characters in the first season that I think were enjoyable, I guess you can say. There are some characters that ultimately feel like they had more to do, but ultimately weren't characters I found to be overly compelling. And then there were some characters from the first season who were much bigger, like the character of Quan Ha, played by Yaren Ha, as well as the character of McKee, played by Charlie Murphy. They each play a pretty significant role in the season as all of the episodes come to conclude, but ultimately I do feel like they were kind of sidelined and it really isn't until you get to the end of the season that their role in what's going on becomes a lot larger. And there isn't really much more I can say on this season without diving into spoilers. So if you haven't seen season two and you don't want any spoilers, this will be the time to bow out. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And for anybody who's just watching up to this point and hasn't watched Halo yet and is like on the fence, maybe you just kind of like listen to me talk about things a little bit openly here about season one and stuff. I, I highly recommend it. I think if you're somebody who's not a fan of Halo, you can go into this and kind of experience the world and be introduced to it all completely brand new and fresh and you don't have to play the video games if gaming is not really your thing. But if you are a big fan of the Halo campaigns and you're looking for an adaptation of that story, it's not here. But if you can, you know, look past it and just check this out that has all the pieces from Halo and creates its own thing, then I think there's a lot of fun to be had. But with all that said, I'm going to touch now just quickly on all the characters, my thoughts on their role in this season on a spoiler level. So if you've seen the season and you're here to talk about these specifics, stick around, leave some comments down below and let me know what you thought about some of these characters and the way that this story played out. But without further ado, let's get into some of the characters with starting with the most important one, which is the character of Master Chief played by Pablo Schreiber, like I mentioned before. And I think for the most part, he does a really good job in this role again i mentioned before it's it's really disappointing that he's unhelmeted for so much of the season but i do think that he does a great job of playing the character he has a lot of fun with the the playing the character and um, i just ultimately really thoroughly enjoy the way he brings the character to life of course the iconic original voice from the video games is what is ringing in my head all the time 
but I do think this guy does a really good job of bringing Master Chief to life. Then we have Natasha McElhone, who plays the character of Dr. Halsey, and yeah, she's essentially imprisoned for a majority of the beginning part of this season, eventually gets out, helps Master Chief in a couple of little moments here and there, and ultimately ends with us finding out that she's been infected by the flood and they've put her into a cryo freeze uh, like kind of stasis mode uh, i had a feeling they weren't going to kill her off when they showcased the bite on her neck um but yeah you know i think she's a great actress i i like her dynamic in this show and the kind of like friend motherly kind of like frankenstein's doctor kind of role that she plays to the rest of the spartans i really thoroughly enjoy her element in this show and i look forward to seeing what they do with her in season three even if i don't feel like they did an abundance with her here then i mentioned before that there's a new director in the mix here this time around that takes over for dr halsey and that is the character of Ackerson, played by joseph morgan and i think that for the most part he does a good job of being that new a-hole boss that comes in that has you know just way too much pride and is just too big for his britches that is exactly what he plays here. He's a pain in the ass character throughout the course of the season. He plays that well. Uh, I am curious to see what they do with his character. At, at, you know, moving forward, uh, I kind of wish that Soren had just left him in that cell at the end of the last episode. Uh, but I, I did really enjoy the, the dynamic of him kind of giving Master Chief a hard time. Even though he's a character that's a big pain in the ass and he's disrespecting Master Chief, he uh, he was a pretty large obstacle throughout the course of the season that consistently frustrated me and i think sometimes the best villains do just that then you have shanaba Azmi coming back as admiral parangoski pain in the ass from beginning to end from season one to season two with now her ass being eaten by the flood fuck off bitch Natasha Kolzak comes back, of course, as Riz, one of the fellow Spartans alongside Master Chief. And uh, yeah, you know, I really enjoy the way that she plays a Spartan role. I think that they did a great job casting the various Spartans, and we're going to talk about the other two in just a second. Um, ultimately, her character ends up getting wounded about halfway through the season, and she chooses to just kind of live a civilian life on a separate planet with some people that could use her help. And um, ultimately, I, I liked what they kind of chose to do with her character. I hope that she, since she's still around, shows up later on, maybe for a big fight in a future season i think that's kind of what they're setting her up to be moving forward uh but yeah you know i like the idea that we have these various spartans that all want different things out of their life now now that they don't have the chips in their head now that they're realizing that you know the unsc kind of treated them like disposable garbage they have this fight to want to kind of live a different life master chief wants to now kick more ass than he ever has kai wanted this sense of purpose of course varic ends up dying which we'll talk about in a moment and uh that kind of essentially pushes riz to want to just live her own life and i think for the most part they handled her character's arc pretty solid um and i'm curious to see what they do with the rest of the spartan characters that are still with us olive gray is in the season once again of course as dr miranda keys the daughter to halsey as well as admiral keys uh yeah you know i think her character was one of those characters as well that i was kind of slightly referencing earlier i didn't mention her name but another character who is in the season but doesn't have an abundance to do and really isn't until the last like three episodes that she has key moments in those episodes but hold not a whole lot of screen time i would honestly be interested to kind of see a roundup of how much actual minutes of screen time she has in this second season because i would honestly be surprised if it was you know more than 10 minutes across three episodes you know I, I just genuinely felt like she was kind of a throwaway character that did didn't really know what to do with for most of the season and ultimately she didn't really have much going on until the very end then i mentioned earlier kwan ha played by yaren ha and i think that she was a really interesting character in the first season the very first season first episode opens up on her planet as her whole fucking family everybody she loves all of her people her dad everybody just gets murked and she's now with the master chief and she kind of grows this fight within her this fear of course is there first but she ultimately realizes she needs to kind of take on the mantle and be what her family intended for her to be after her father which was to go back and you know save her planet of magical and in this season, I feel like she was one of the most just underwritten characters that they had. You know, she was a key part of that first season and ultimately is just kind of sidelined throughout the entirety of this season, not really doing a whole lot, kind of just there during some key moments of action, there to help people get in and out of situations. She has key moments, and especially as we get to the last couple of episodes where it seems like she has some sort of connection with the flood. I'm really excited to see how they handle that in the next season. But ultimately, when it comes down to her character across all the episodes she was in pretty much every episode and i always found that she really didn't have a lot to do and i was surprised by that again they kind of show the bigger picture with her in this final episode 
but I don't think that they had an abundance to do with her for majority of the season, and she was kind of relegated to kind of just being a helping hand for other characters in the mix. And those main characters I should mention are the characters of Soren and Lara, who their son uh, Kessler is missing throughout a big portion of this season. And so the two of them get together with Quan Ha to, to, to fight, you know, and, and try to find where Kessler is. Uh, the character of Lara gets a lot more screen time here, played by Fiona O'Shaughnessy. Of course, her husband is the character of Soren, a former Spartan, played by uh, Bokeen Woodbine. I think the two of them do a great job. They play a really solid and interesting couple. There's a little bit of an awkwardness there, but I did find myself enjoying the character of Lara a little bit more in this season, only for her to kind of sacrifice herself in pretty much here at the end of this last episode, because she too was bit by one of the infected by the flood. And so we lose a couple of characters in this season, which was pretty shocking. I think it sets up a lot of our characters moving into season three. They have a lot more of an emotional stake in what's going Going on and uh, yeah you know while I thought that that whole side quest of finding Kessler was a little bit of a letdown at times or it kind of felt like this random side quest that was kind of taking away from the main story by the time we got to the end I do think it sets things up for a really interesting place for those characters moving forward into season three now I mentioned I wanted to talk about some of those other Spartans and Kai is the next one I want to talk about played by Kate Kennedy who is an interesting one here in the mix because she's the only real one that tends to have a lot of scenes with Master Chief at a certain point. She's the only one that kind of combats him in dialogue as well as sides with him and realizes kind of when she's fucked up and decided to work under Ackerson over the course of the season and now she kind of has to kind of realign herself and, and recognize who she actually stands with which is Master Chief and I think that Kate Kennedy plays the character of Kai so well she's probably my second favorite without a doubt I don't think Master Chief is ever not going to be my favorite Spartan but she's easily my second favorite of the Spartans that he fights alongside they showcase that it looks like she, because she sacrificed herself there at the end with the big blast it does seem as though she is dead, but I really don't think she is. The way that they just kind of showed her body floating in space with the helmet on and everything, I have a feeling we will be seeing Kai in the next season. And then there's Bentley Kalu as Vanek, who does die in the season, as I mentioned earlier. And I thought, you know, it was handled well. He gets killed by a needler, which is pretty crazy amidst the whole fight where we're first introduced to the Arbiter who's in this season. As soon as I saw him and they were kind of focusing on this one, uh, this one alien from the Covenant, I was like, okay, that's definitely the Arbiter. And then they said his name. I was like, hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, Vanek dies in that fight. And uh, yeah, I think the actor played it, played it so well, especially the death scene. And I think, again, it gave the rest of our Spartan characters something to fight for and, and gave them new motivation in life. And it's a shame to see such a cool character die but you can tell with the way that they're kind of separating all the Spartans now that they kind of want to set things up for what Master Chief typically does in the video games. If you played Halo, there are some games where he has some Spartans that are involved in some of these events with him and some games that have groups of Spartans working together. But ultimately, when it comes down to Master Chief, him being on his own is what makes Master Chief, Master Chief. Speaking of characters that died, you have Admiral Keyes, played by Danny Sapani. Once again, I thought he did a great job in this season. Once again, though, I don't feel like he has an abundance to do throughout the entirety of the season. A lot of it is relegated to exposition and a lot of sequences where he's just talking to our characters in various boardrooms. But he does ultimately sacrifice himself by distracting the enemy so that Master Chief and the rest of the gang can get away on reach. And I ultimately really enjoyed his sacrifice. I thought the performance was great. There's some nice really great swelling music during that sequence and I, I think this actor is pretty strong in this role then you have the character of Cortana of course played by Jen Taylor as far as the voice who plays the character in the games and then you have the physical embodiment of the character being Christina Bennington and it's always great to see Cortana there's really no complaints there she's the most accurate of all the characters that are in this that are from the game without a doubt they got Cortana absolutely down to a T and then I mentioned the Arbiters in here he's played by Victor Ackerblom I think majority of that was just either just full-on CGI or they did some motion capture perhaps uh, but he does the voice from what I understand and it was great to see the Arbiter. They show the Arbiter at the end get killed by Master Chief with an energy sword to the chest, but um, I don't believe that's going to happen. I don't think he's actually dead. They showed it like pretty convincing that he's dead, but if you played the video games, there's no fucking way they killed off the Arbiter, and if they did, that would be such, such a disappointment, but again, I think if you're a fan of the games, you're thinking what I'm thinking. There's no way that that actually happened, and then the last character to talk about is the character of McKee, played once again by Charlie Murphy. 
She is that love interest kind of weak point for John throughout the course of the season still. He's kind of reaching out to her. And in the end, she pretty much tells him that she's a demon. And similar to the character of Quan and a couple others, I just felt like she was relegated to a lot of exposition and a lot of just kind of helping the Arbiter and the Covenant pretty much get to the Halo, which is where the entire season ends. And ultimately, I just... I just didn't feel like they did enough with her character. In the end, she tells Master Chief she's a demon as well, and she just kind of goes off on her own adventure. And the season finale kind of was capped off by um, a shot of Master Chief speaking to somebody at the very beginning, in the middle, and at the end. And, uh, of course, we learn it is that uh, little little blue orb, the little silver orb with the blue eye. His, his name escapes me right now. Um, but, of course, if you played uh, Halo, you are absolutely aware of who that character is, as there are many, many missions throughout the games where you have that character alongside you talking all kinds of shit and leading you through the paths of the Flood and all the various things that you have to fight throughout the course of Halo. With all that said, guys, that's going to be my thoughts on Halo Season 2. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is a little bit longer than usual, but when I talk about these seasons of television, it's a lot more than just talking about a, a one movie that's an hour and a half or two hours long. There's so much to talk about. There's so many various characters and storylines, and so I just wanted to sit here and dedicate some time talking about it. I had a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought about Halo Season 2. Are you going to be checking it out? Did you already check it out? Whatever the case may be, leave any and all comments down below, and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Bye-bye.